Alright. I think I finally got it working, uh, having some more stuff. But anyways, alright guys, welcome to uh, Makeup for Workshop 2. Um, it's just me today, Adam. Asa is working on some other stuff. Um, so if you have any questions, please uh, uh, either chat them in the Twitch feed. I'm watching that. Um, I guess uh, if, if they're not uh, super dire, like you can send us an email. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, before I go through the slides, uh, we had some announcements at the um, workshop too. Uh, the guy, Austin Steingrube, uh, he started the competition. He was able to come and chat with us um, at the actual workshop too on Wednesday. And he is offering a bunch of services for us, uh, for you guys. Um, and all the money he he makes from that, he's donating to us to go towards the competition. Uh, that'll go towards things like uh, help us get judges, uh, reserving the room. Uh, he he already donated some stuff uh, for parts in your kits, stuff like that. Uh, it's very very cool. Um, so services he he is providing uh, include he he can uh he can uh, etch some circuit boards for you guys single sided boards. I think they're the biggest he can do are about uh, it looked like five inches by four inches I think. Um, and he's, he was charging fifteen dollars a board for that, and he also made his own milling machine that can kind of cut parts out of a uh, thin thin material. He showed us one he brought. It was it just kind of cut out some wood parts, and his milling machine was able to cut pieces out of that. And you could it it it'd be something to make your project look professional. Uh, it's made a it so you can cut out the parts for you, and that was seven dollars an hour uh, for him to cut out parts like that uh, for your project. So if you have any more, uh, if you want more details on that, uh, either send us an email. We we plan on updating the website soon for stuff about that. Uh, other than that, let's get started. All right, so you already know how to code. So far, we just uh, in workshop one, we just kind of taught you what the Arduino is, how to you know plug it in, program it, basic things like that. So the next big part of making something for this competition would be the hardware or circuitry. Uh, so we're gonna uh, hopefully we can kind of cover some basic stuff with that with this workshop. Uh, we're going to teach you, you know, how to connect components, uh, something to, to actually work with the Arduino, as opposed to just programming code and only having a code project. So let's see. So let me switch to my pseudo dot cam here. I'm in my apartment right now, um, alone. Very scary. So. First thing we kind of want to teach you, you know, when you when you're putting together a circuit, what what are some basic concepts of that? So, first thing I want to talk about here, um, voltage. So that what the Arduino works on, it's it's going on five volts DC, uh, which means it's just a it's a five volt. 5 volt voltage that doesn't alternate at all as opposed to AC. Um, I'll probably get into that later. But so it's let me just draw the, the most simple circuit you can have here. Alright. Okay. So what this is, um, this is just kind of a simple circuit. You have uh, uh, a voltage source here. This isn't really. A, well, I guess if you were to draw the voltage source, something like this. So this is just a battery and then a resistor. And then here's the resistor. And then everything else. So like this is a wire. Of course, this is also a wire here. I'll really just through my arm. So basically, what this circuit does is you have you know your voltage your voltage source here, and the a thing called current. So that's the other other electrical component here. Ah. 
So when you have uh, a voltage difference, the current, the current, or this kind of the the flow of electrons throughout your circuit, um, the current flows in the direction it, it it goes from a high voltage source to a low voltage source. So what this circuit is doing, you have your this is, this is your battery here. So what what's going on is the five uh, your your power here from 5 volts is flowing through this resistor down into here which th this 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 thing is a ground symbol and what that means it's it means relative to the rest of the circuit this is 0 volts now it's normally called ground cuz say if you're dealing with like something with a lot of power you usually um, connect this part to the ground um, in order to prevent uh, getting yourself shocked, kind of, it's it's a little bit complicated, more complicated than that. But for now, just think of ground as zero volts. So when you look at a wire, you can think of a wire as a resistor with um, no resistance. So basically, if you know you touch this end of the wire here to your five volt source. Then also over here, this is also five volts. So um, if you know, like, the, there's no voltage drop because there's no resistance. So that's what this resistor's job is. The resistor allows the voltage to drop on each side of it without, you know, burning something up and then things burn out and break. <laughs> so um, let's say if this resistor had a value of let's say 500 ohms so this is a symbol for ohms ohms is the measure of resistance um, that means that it, and you can you can figure out the current that, that's going through there using the simple equation V equals I R I should probably use some different colors here but, uh, so this is of course your voltage This is your current, and this is your resistance. This is probably one of the most basic. Uh, I need a different piece of paper. This is one of the most basic equations all, electro, all electrical engineers use whenever they're trying to figure something out. So, in order to find, say, the current going through this this um, branch. Uh, you, you'd find, so since you have your resistor, you find the voltage difference from each side. So right now it goes from 5 volts to 0 volts. So, of course, that means that's a 5. And then your resistance is 500 ohms. So then you just um, you divide that out, find the current. Start a new piece of paper here. So, so we know RV is 5 volts. R is 500 ohms. Let me just draw the circuit again. So here's your battery. Here's your resistor. 5 volts. This is ground. And then this is your 500 ohms. Okay, so in order to find the current going through there, you just use our equation V equals IR. So you have 5 volts equals your current times 500 ohms. You divide that out, you get 5 over 500 equals I, and that's 0 0.01 amps, which is the measure of current. So the reason these are important is when you have electrical components, say, um, Let's say you have a diode, which we'll be using here, or a light emitting diode to be precise. Uh, the symbol for that is this, where the current flows this way. So that means this has a higher voltage than this. So these usually have um, a limit to how much current you can push through it without burning it up. So uh, the standard LED, or you know, a little light, which they look like this. They're probably my favorite. 
Um, the, the standard one only allows about 20 milliamps, I want to say. So in our case, we have 0.1 amps, which is the same as 10 milliamps. So that's less than that, so that should be okay. Now, this isn't the maximum rating. That's usually about, about what you want to push through. So anyways, that's just kind of some basic circuit theory in a nutshell, sort of. All right, so let's look at our breadboard here uh, to do circuits. So on our breadboard, uh, that's basically this. The, the back of that kind of shows how the connections are. Um, so how, if if you have uh, something connected to this this hole here and this hole, that means they're connected together. Because as you can see, it's basically just you can think of each each row here as a, a wire and that it connects anything you plug into that row. If you notice, they're split down the middle, so you can plug something into here and here, and it, they won't, the ends will not be connected. So basically, anything you want to connect together, you just put in the same row. Uh, thank you. Yada, yada, yada. All right, so let's go over our basic components. So I already kind of told you about resistors. They basically allow allow for a voltage difference and that way you can kind of uh, set the current by putting in a certain resistor value so now the, the other thing here is the LED the light emitting diode so now uh, with resistors you can put them in you can put those in a circuit any orientation so if let's say if you connect um, this end to you know the top of your battery this end to the bottom it would be exactly the same is if you connected this to the top and this to the bottom, you can put them in any orientation. But the LEDs, that's not the same. So you have to put them in a certain order. You have to put them so that the higher voltage is on the anode and the lower voltage is on the cathode, or they won't light up and it won't allow current to flow through. They uh, only allow current in a certain direction. I'm hoping my Twitch stream is working here. I'm watching here. It looks like it cut out in the middle. Either way. All right, so the way you tell is the cathode or the the part, the end you want towards the lower voltage has a little flat end on the side. Um, it's, it's usually a little hard to see. I've heard some people in the workshop look like they had a flat end on both sides, which is weird. But another way to tell is the anode has the longer wire. So if you if you look at uh, if you if you look at your resistor from your kits, it should have the longer wire of the two. Okay. Now, um, so now we're gonna go ahead and try and just apply these. So it, it you'll get a, it, it'll make a lot more sense once we go through them here. So go ahead and open up your blink sketch. Uh, from well, workshop one. If you don't have it or you didn't go to workshop one, go to this site here, uh, our blog, csuidesign.blogspot.com, and click on the workshop tab, workshops tab, and under workshop one in code files, it'll be in there. So you can use our code or your code. The last time, if you had that, that should work just fine. So let me go ahead and open up my blink sketch. All right. All right, so here's my blink sketch here. And so you don't need to change anything for it for what we're going to use it for. Basically what we're going to do now is instead of using the onboard LED we are going to make an off-board LED and wire it up, make sure it works that way as well. So let me, uh, let's go to the next slide here. So like I said, no, no, no modifications are necessary. We're just basically, instead of using the onboard LED, we're going to wire up an external one on our breadboard. So uh, for this, what we're going to need, we're going to need um, a one of your LEDs so pick one with only the two leads I know there is one with four we're not using that one that one's different 
that one we'll actually use next week. Um, so go ahead and pick up an LED. I'll show you in a second here. And then we're going to need a 330 ohm resistor, which if you look at the little stripes on them, uh, this, they, there should be, in this order, orange, orange, brown, and gold stripes on them. So there, there is a resistor color code that tells you the resistor value. Uh, this is a 330 ohm resistor, orange, orange, brown, gold. Um, this, the, you might have a resistor that's smaller than some of your other ones. That just change, that, that doesn't change their value. That just changes basically how much current you can put through it uh, before making it blow up. But for our purposes, they're, they're, they both work fine. So if yours is smaller, it's this, just, it, it, as long as it has the orange, orange, brown, gold, it should be fine. Um, here is how we connect it. I am going to ahead. I'm going to go. Let me show you guys how we're doing this here. One second. One, three. Okay. So now I'm going to try and show you guys here. So, where did I just put my breadboard? Oh my gosh. Ah, it fell on the floor. Okay. So, here's your breadboard. And I'm going to use the same LED. So the way this is wired up, the we want the so here's your LED. So this is the longer one or the anode, and this is the shorter one or the cathode. Also, the shorter one should have that flat edge we we're talking about. This one's not as flat; it's a little bit flat. But so put the longer one in the right side here, and the shorter one. In the left side of your breadboard here, just like that. And I noticed uh, some of the breadboards we had; it was a little harder to actually get things to stick in them. Um, if it's harder, you know, just just push a little bit harder. It it should work just fine, um, as long as the both leads are securely in there. All right, so now we need our 330 ohm resistor, which Mine's kind of one of the smaller ones. Um, you can't, I doubt you can see that at all. I don't think so. But it's got the, let me write down that color code here. Like we said, should be orange, orange, brown, gold. Oh my gosh, I can't even spell gold. Gold. So orange, orange, brown, gold. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter which end goes where because that they don't, the resistors don't care. You can put them in like that or turn it around, put it in that way. That'll still work the same. So now we're going to put in our resistor, making sure that each end are just not in the same row. Because that would mean both ends are connected, and then it would just go, it would bypass the resistor. Our current would not go through the resistor, it would just go right next to it. So here's kind of our basic circuit. Now we need to plug it into the Arduino. Like that. Okay, so we're going to use two wires. We need to connect. One wire here. This should be a ground pin, G or GIND. G and D, that's the ground pin for the Arduino. We need to connect this, this end of the wire to the ground, and then this other end goes to the cathode, or the shorter end of the LED. So the shorter end should be on the left side here, if you plug that in the same way. All right, and now we're going to plug in the other end to pin 13, which is the pin we set to blink. So make sure you plug this wire in the same row as the other end of the resistor here. And then this goes to pin 13, which should be right below the ground pin. So there's our circuit. Um, so now what we want to do is go down here. See how I plug it in. Have that plugged in. I'll leave that here. 
So go ahead and plug your Uno in. And then I'm going to upload that Blink sketch here. And then it should start to blink the LED like that. If it's not blinking, uh, I would just say make sure your LED is in the correct orientation. If it's backwards, it won't blink. Um, so like uh, the schematic shows, the longer end to, goes to the resistor, the shorter end goes to ground. Uh, another thing that's interesting about this circuit, you could put the resistor on the other side of the LED and it would still work. So right now the way we have it hooked up so this is our LED and this is our um, resistor, a 330 ohm. So right now we have oh wait a second, I think I drew this yep, I totally drew this backwards. Alright, pretend this is cut off. So right now, we have it uh, drawn like this. So the, this is your pin 13. And what's going on is when the blink sketch is going, every, sec every half a second, it's changing this voltage from 5 to 0 volts, to 5, to 0 volts, and just cycling like that. So it's so what's going on is once this goes up to 5 volts, then that allows for a current to flow through this circuit, turning on the LED. When there's and since since there's a you know around around 20 milliamps of current, the LED lights up. Then once this goes back down to zero, you have zero on both ends. Therefore, no current is flowing because there's no voltage difference across this resistor and then the LED turns off. Alright, um, so that should be that for this. Or, oh, like I was saying, you can put them in a different orientation. So we could also hook up our circuit like this. And it would work just fine. So this is ground. This is our 330 ohm resistor. And here's our LED. As long as the anode is connected to the higher voltage, which again is here when it's turned on, here it is pin 13, then it can still flow in this direction. Um, so if you put the resistor on either side of the LED, it should still work. All that resistor does is limit the amount of current that goes through there. All right. Okay. So now we did that. We did that. Okay. Now we're gonna um, start to incorporate some digital I/O, which is input/output. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my Arduino and everything. I uh, should go up, and there's a spider. He's dead. Okay, <clears throat> as I was saying, uh, we're going to incorporate some digital I.O. into this and make it so that when you push a button, it will continue to blink. And if you release the button, then it will stop blinking. So, um, how we're going to hook this up is we add uh, with the button. Uh, let me show you this. Um, we're going to use a 10k, so now find a 10k resistor that we're going to use with the button. The, um, the color code on that should be brown, black, orange, and then gold. Let me see. Yeah, so here's our circuit we're going to make. So basically, keep your blink, your, uh, blink circuit plugged in. We're going to keep that and just add the button to the side. 
uh, one second. Gotta switch this to so you can see both. All right. I'm gonna try to make this a bit bigger here, so you guys can see more what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So you keep your, if you notice here, we still have the blink LED set up there. That should still be working. Um, and we're just adding a button off to the side. So you take your 10 kilo ohm resistor, again that's uh, brown, black, orange, and gold. And we're going to just, you plug one end into the ground, which is uh, the same row as the cathode of the LED or the short the shorter the shorter lead and then you plug it over here and then I'm gonna put this button on. One thing we notice the buttons don't really like to stay on these boards so just kinda mine does for whatever reason but if it pops up just uh, try and get it in there I guess best you can. Alright let's see what else am I doing? Oh, then we need to connect. So if, if if you notice, the button has four leads. Two of them are connected together. Um, I forget exactly how. So we're only going to use one side. So don't worry about connecting anything on this side, uh, as you can see from the schematic. So basically, what this let me let me draw. As you see with the circuit diagram, we're just kind of adding a button to the side. Um, so what this button is going to do is we're going to set it to an input and this resistor is called a pull down resistor and the reason that is is because so right here when the button so that since the buttons here what this is doing is we're connecting this end of the button to our digital that's our two, two input pin input pin 2 and then this end is to ground. So basically, when this switch is disconnected, which this end is connected to 5 volts, when this is disconnected, there's nothing uh, driving this node from going to a higher voltage. So since this end is connected to ground, all the excess charge is going to flow down to ground, and this is going to stay at 0 volts because there's nothing driving it up to 5. So then when you push the switch closed, since this side is connected to 5 volts, then this 5 volts drives this end to be 5 volts. And since there's a resistor there, that can happen without anything blowing up. And it'll make this node 5 volts. And then we can read that 5 volts on the pin here. So we want to connect the end of the button without the resistor to 5 volts, which is way on the other side of the board here. Should be there. So a little 5V, that's 5 volts. And then we want to connect this row with the resistor to our input 2 pin, like that. So let me just kind of redraw this circuit here. So like I said, this this side is connected to 5 volts. Here's our switch right here. Um, this is 5 volts. And then we have our pull-down resistor going to ground or 0 volts. And then we have here, this goes to our pin 2, which we read which we will read from. So, as I was saying earlier, when you close the switch, this node it comes connected to this node, and this 5 volts drags this end up to 5 volts, and you can read that on pin 2, and it makes a little current flow through here. This is our 10K resistor. And the reason we use such a high resistor value for here is the only thing, it, 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 what it does is since you have a high resistor value, you have a low current that flows through here. 
and that kind of results in low lower power usage for just this button. Um, it's it's more just kind of general practice. Whenever you're doing something where all you need to read in is the voltage, you don't really care how much current is. You want to try and make that current as low as possible so you use less power. So yeah, switch closes. Uh, this end gets driven to 5 volts. When you have the switch open, this connection is broken. There's nothing driving this node anymore. And then this, so all the excess charge gets sucked down here. And then since there's no current anymore, this is all just 0 volts. And then reads in at 0. And that's basically how that works. So now, let's go ahead and... We're going to start to program this guy. So we're going to start with a bare minimum sketch. So you go File, Examples, Basics, Bare Minimum. Uh, we don't need the blink sketch anymore. All right, so here's our bare minimum. So first thing we want to do, um, actually, this is kind of another coding convention thing. Above the void setup, we're going to add some define statements. So this is hashtag or pound or whatever you like to call it, define. And then one space LED and space 13. So basically what this is doing, this is a, something that tells the compiler of the code that we want to, that whenever you see the word LED in the following code, replace it with the number 13. So that's what this is saying. Note there is no semicolon afterwards. Uh, I think this was kind of originally an assembly thing, which is a different programming language. It's about as basic as you can get. Well, by basic, I mean close to the hardware. So it wasn't really basic at all. Um, so there's no semicolon at the end. And it's, it is not the same thing as a variable. You cannot say LED. So if I were to say LED equals, you know, 5, what this is saying is it's trying to set. So since what, the, what the compiler will go through when it's reading this code, and it says, oh, uh, I see the word LED here. I better replace that with 13. So then it's saying 13 equals 5. It'll say, what are you trying to do? You can't set the number 13 to 5. That's an error. So if I try to compile this, it's saying, what the heck are you doing? And if also, yeah, so if we say LED equals 5, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> so, like I said, this is not a variable. It is simply something to tell the compiler. Whenever you see this, replace it with this. It's, it's a good coding convention to use because this way you can set your pins. Say you would need to turn your LED pin as an output. Then you know when you type here, uh, pin mode LED output, it, it just it's it's again it's a readability thing. So you can say, oh, here I'm turning my LED pin, whatever that is, and setting it to an output. Also, this way, if you need to change which pin it is, all you have to do is change this number once, and then it fixes it for the rest of your code. And it's super handy. So sorry. So after the, this define, we're also going to define um, our button to be two. So this is saying, you know, our LEDs on pin 13, our buttons on pin 2. We are setting our LED as an output, and we're setting our button as an input this time. So that should fix that for that. All right, and now we're going to introduce another coding practice here, the while loop. So basically what we want to do is we want to continually check for a button press. So we say while digital read button is high or while the button is pressed, then do the thing in these curly braces. So this is kind of the uh, uh, along the same lines as a, an if statement. It's a conditional statement that says, you know, while this, whatever's in these, while, while this is true, do what's ever next, which in this case is this chunk of code between these curly braces. Um, so 
Oh, and then after this last curly brace, so this will be outside the while loop, we want to digital right LED low. So what this is saying is, you know, while the button is pushed, do something in there. Once the button is no longer pushed, exit this while loop, and then we'll just turn the LED off in case it's on. Because, like, what this code is going to do is, you know, once you hold down the button, it starts blinking. When you let go of the button, we want the LED to be off. All right. So next thing we want to do inside this while loop. Um, so while the button's being held, we, of course, want our LED to blink. So we are doing a digital right, if I can spell it. We're going to set the LED to on and then wait 250 milliseconds or whatever you prefer. Then we're going to do another digital right LED low. Uh, the spaces don't matter, I'm just making it more readable. And then we're going to delay another 250 milliseconds. So this should blink the LED twice a second, turn it on for a fourth off for fourth, on for fourth, on for fourth, so on. So, and of course this is all while the button is being pressed. So that should be the extent of the code. So we're going to go ahead and oh, uh, first plug your Arduino in. Go ahead and upload the code. And then while the, you push the button down, it should blink. When you release, it'll stop blinking. Just like that. Hooray! Okay. All right. So the next, so our next project. This will be the last project we have now. Um, it, it, I kind of got to thinking about Fort Collins traffic lights. They're red for way too long and green for way too short. So by the way, this is illegal. Don't actually do this. <laughs> uh, I, I I take no responsibility for anything you actually do. But as far for our purposes, we want to make a stoplight that we have a secret button for. So when we push the button, it'll change it to a green light, and then, so it doesn't interrupt the flow of traffic, it'll change back to red when we're done. Or after five seconds, which is about how long they usually last. So here's the kind of, here's our uh, schematic here. It looks a little complicated. So basically for this, we're gonna use three LEDs uh, set up in a stoplight. Um, we're connecting all the grounds together. If you notice in this compared to the other circuits, I have the LEDs uh, reversed from the last two we did. So uh, I would go ahead and take everything off your board. We'll start from scratch. Of course, unplug your Arduino so you don't accidentally fry anything. Okay. And of course, we want to show both here. All right. So, all right, let's hook this guy up. So, we're going to need, of course, a new piece of paper. So, we're going to get. So you need your 10 kilo ohm resistor for the button. So here's our 10K in the button. You need all three of these LEDs, and then you also need three 330 ohm resistors. So those should all be uh, the, no, what is that? Orange, orange, brown, gold. So let me write that. So we need one times our 10K, which is, Orange, no. Brown, black, orange, and we need three times the 330 ohms. Ah. 
and that is orange, orange, brown, brown. Okay. Ugh, I never noticed how many colors are have the similar have 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 similar beginning letters. All right. So what we want to do is, of course, start with our LEDs. So in my diagram. Oh, by the way, I labeled cathode and anode incorrectly. Anode is the longer one. Pay no attention to this. That is that is false. So we want the longer one on uh, the left this time. So longer one to the left. I'm going to put them about... So there's two spaces in between them, but... That's just because you know we kind of need to. We have limited space here. And you know, I set them up like a stoplight. So then we need to take our three 330 ohm resistors and kind of put them sideways like this. Now make sure that you don't that uh, the row you put the other end of the resistor in is not the same row touching another LED. Uh, that'll cause some problems. Basically, make it so. Uh, Whenever you turn on, it'll just don't do it. So right here, I have this end connected to the red LED. The other end is in an empty row. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. So like it, like I said, this is not the same row as the green LED. All right, same with this. All right, so each one is about like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to connect each each of the anodes of the LED or the longer ones to a different output pin. And then we're going to connect all the grounds together because that's where they're all going anyways. So now what we want to do, we'll just connect all the grounds together. I'm using my shorter, shorter little jumpers, so we're going to connect these two together. So, so these ones, this end is connected to both ends of the LED. And then we want to connect these ones together as well. So now they're all connected to the same node. So we say, and then I'm going to bring down this over here uh, because we'll need to connect one end of our 10K resistor to the other end. So here's our 10K resistor. I'm going to connect one to the bottom, one to this other ground, and then, oh, you do want to make sure these are more than three apart, which mine are four apart, so that you don't hit both ends of the buttons there. So here's the button. So this end of the button is connected to this end of the resistor. This resistor is just connected to the rest of these. Okay, so that does it for those connections. So now we want to connect, uh, connect up our ground to everything else. So we're going to put one wire here, which is on this end of the resistor, and the rest of these should all be connected together. And this goes to ground, which we had over here. All right, and then let's connect the rest of our LEDs up. So here are the wires for our LEDs. So this one is connecting to the other end of this resistor, that row. And that's our red one red LED which goes into pin 7. Just kind of kind of follow that there so then connecting to the yellow resistor, yellow LED resistor. Yeah. I can get it in there. Maybe there it goes. That goes into pin 6. And then this goes into this end of the resistor. That goes into pin 5. Okay. 
So now all of our resistors are connected, um, and we just need to finish connecting up the button. So on this top end of the button, we need to connect that to our 5 volts. So that will go over here to 5 volts. So that is the top left pin of the button. Our bottom left pin here, we need to connect to pin 2. So that is our input pin there. And now everything should be hooked up and ready to go. So let's get cracking on the code here. Alright, so go ahead and open up the bare minimum. Ah, uh, bare minimum. I'm so funny. Alright, so I'll put up the bare minimum here. Oh, hold on. Alright, we'll close out of this one. Here's our blink sketch. Now we need to open up the bare minimum. I thought I already had it open. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start with the bare minimum again. And we're going to add some defines at the very top outside the setup loop. We want to define our red light to be pin 7. Our yellow light to be 6. Green light to be five, and then one more. And then now we want to define our input button pin, which is button to be two. One convention um, coders generally use is to um, use all caps for but uh, for defines. It's it's since they're a constant, usually they're in all caps. It's it's, it's again, it's just kind of a readability thing. That way, it's kind of saying, oh, this thing's in all caps, that means it's a constant and I can't change it. Um, so after we have the defines, we're going to go ahead and put all this into our setup here. So we need to first set all the output pins. Set all our outputs. I'm going to just erase this line because it's useless. Okay, so... So we need to do pin mode, red light, out, oops, output, and pin mode, yellow light, oops, I capitalized the O, there we go, pin mode, green light, output, and then, of course, pin mode button is an input. Oh, which means we separate this and say set inputs for readability. Because we like our code to be readable, because then people who have to read our code don't entirely hate us. So now what we want to do is start the light out to be red, because, of course, it's always red when you get to it. So start with a red light. And of course what this uh, means is we need all the lights to be off except for the red one. So digital right, we want to set the red light to high. So we're turning the red light on, yellow light, low, Green light. Oh, I keep holding shift and backspace, which is basically the same as delete. And we want that to be low also, so we're turning on the red light, turning off the yellow light, turning off the green light. So that's it for our setup method. So now I'm going to get rid of this in our void loop. We are going to set up the loop here. We're going to add two while loops with a delay in between them. So the trick here is we're using our while, while loops to wait until you push the button and then release the button. So our first while loop, while digital read button. So here we're waiting until 
the condition is no longer true. So our condition is that the button is not being pressed. So the button is low. So, so we're waiting until the button is no longer not being pressed. And then once while it is not pressed, we just have nothing in between these curly braces to show while we're waiting for this button to be pressed, don't do anything. So now we want to add the delay. This is, acts as a debounce delay. Now what that means, so with the physical button, with this physical button here, uh, the second you push it down, when it's transitioning, when, when, you, when, you, when you hear that click, there's a very, very small amount of time when the contacts inside this button are kind of, they're about to touch, and then once they do, they kind of bounce a little bit. But it's very, very small. But if you were to look at a very small scale signal uh, between the contacts of these buttons, you would see it. So if you push the button here, then your signal would be like this. This is called bounce, or uh, it just kind of. So when you push the button, this is say I don't know a couple, couple microseconds. So like I don't know, maybe one or two microseconds. So it's 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 very very small, but since your since this processor runs it, the Arduino runs at about 16 megahertz. It's pretty fast. It can see each of these each of these peaks, and it basically thinks that you push the button once, twice, however many times it bumps like that. So in order to uh, make it not think that we push the button a whole bunch of times, we really only pushed it once. We basically wait for this first time, and then we just kind of wait until it's settled out, like over here. So five milliseconds, that's, you know, for us, that's no time at all. For the computer, it's kind of a while, but it's enough to wait for this to kind of settle and realize, okay, the button is being held down. So we add that delay, so we wait five milliseconds, and then we want to wait for them to release the button. So we say while, whoops, digital read button is high, do nothing. So again, we're, these are just busy waits. We're waiting for them to push the button, then it, it does nothing for five milliseconds, and then it starts waiting until you release the button. Because if we didn't have that delay in there, it would think you released it here. When really it's just this bounce happening, you didn't release it. So we want it to wait until you release the button. And then we'll move on. So next part of the code. This looks really complicated, but I just added a bunch of comments. So look over here. This is all the code you'll need. So now after we push the button, we need to change the light to green, you know, and then it'll only last for about five seconds. Then it needs to go to a yellow and then a red again. So we want a green light after we push the button. Then, of course, it needs to go to yellow and then finally to red again. And then we'll complete the cycle. Uh, after you push the button again. So we need to add our green light. So after you push the button, light will change to green. So that just means we have to turn all the lights off except for green. So right now, the red light is the only one that's on. So we'll set it to low, turn it off. Now we need to turn on our green light. So now our green light's on, and now of course we have to tell it to wait until the green light is over, which is about five seconds or five hundred mill five thousand milliseconds. So now after the green light's over, we need of course to do a yellow light because if we just went to a red light, people would be like, "What's going on?" So now we have our yellow light, and we want digital. Oh my gosh, I didn't even finish these. Digital right. There we go. Oh my gosh, I cannot type today. Digital right, digital right. Okay. Digital right. 
Ah, right. So now we need to turn off the green light and turn on the yellow light. I think I just got rid of... I did. Okay. Green light. Low. Digital right. Yellow light. High. So we're turning off the green light since it's the only one that's on now. Turning on the yellow light. And then yellow lights last for, I don't know, about one and a half seconds. In Fort Collins, people seem to think they last 10 seconds, but that's besides the point. <laughs> so now, after the yellow light, we finally have our red light. Um, so just like the last ones, we just have to turn off the yellow light. So set that to low. And then turn on our red light. And then we don't need a delay for this. Uh, you, I guess you could add one, but so now, what else, so now what happens is we get to the end of the loop, and it starts over, waiting for the button. So that should be all the code you need. So let's go ahead and plug in our Arduino, upload the sketch, and get it working. So we want to upload. All right, it's done uploading. So as you can see, it starts off with the red light. Then you push the button, it goes to green. And then after about five seconds, yellow light, and back down to red. So that's our final sketch there. Again, if the LEDs don't turn on at all, double check that they're in the right orientation. Um, so uh, the way I have it here, uh, this side, is the or the longer the longer end and then the other side is the cathode probably can't read that at all but so longer end shorter end is the way I have it so the shorter end goes to ground longer ends go to the resistors and then to the pins All right, so now um, at the workshop we have our challenge here, which is to create an, a, 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 a device that will basically change lights depending on uh, button presses. So for this, we want you to incorporate a second button. Uh, so when you push one button for the red, the other one for the green, or if you push both, then it changes the, the yellow light on. So, like I said, it's, it's meant to keep annoying siblings out. Not that it'll work, but uh, it'll at least change a status light. So if the light was, say, on your door, and you push one button, it turns green. Push the other one, it turns uh, red. If you push both, it turns yellow. Some hints. The only change you'll need to make, uh, is just, in, as far as the circuit goes, is to wire up another button. Uh, you'll have to wire it up basically exactly like the other button, where the only the only common nodes between them will be five volts, and then yeah, I guess five volts. The other end should have a separate resistor that goes to ground, and of course. Um, uh, tied to the same node as that resistor and the button goes to another input pin, probably three or whatever you choose. Um, also, uh, Asa came up with this challenge. He says you'll need an if, an else if, an else block to check the buttons and to pay careful attention in which order you check the buttons, yada yada. Uh, since we can't really help you as much over Twitch here, if you would like to try the challenge, we urge you to bring it to the next workshop and uh, either show it off, say, hey, I did the challenge, cool beans, or, hey, I'd really like to do the challenge, but it's not working 
help me out and we would love to help you out. Uh, for different additional references, here's some more things to go to. You can, you can, of course, there's our website. We got Arduino forums. Oh, uh, the pictures I made, um, like this, like this picture that was made with a program called Fritzing. Oops. Um, you can find that at the fritzing.org. It's pretty neat. It, you can also uh, map out your schematic and everything there. Uh, for resistor color codes, uh, I think we just found a picture there. Um, but it's really easy to Google, or you just go to that link we have there. Uh, it basically tells you how to figure out what value of resistor you have based on the color codes. Now, so that's a, I still use that reference all the time. I don't know of anyone who's memorized it, so... I, I recommend if you if you're trying to find a specific resistor value, um, usually they don't have super specific values. And and what that gold band means, um, which you'll see on the chart, it's basically a tolerance. So if you have a 10k resistor with the gold band at the end, that means it's about 10 kilo ohms plus or minus five percent. So it could also be slightly less than 10k or slightly more, but Again, with electronics, nothing is really nothing is really that precise. Everything works within a broad, pretty fairly broad range. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, send us an email. Uh, I'll be checking that out, and we will be live streaming the next workshop, workshop three, which is this next Wednesday. The Oh, what day is that? I believe it's the 29th. No, it's the 30th. It's the 30th because... No, it is the 29th. Wednesday the 29th. Let me double check my calendar. I'm really crazy. Yes, it's the 29th. Wednesday the 29th is the next workshop. Workshop 3 will be going, analog, going over analog input and output. Uh, we'll teach you how to use the RGB LED, which is that LED that has four four prongs coming out of it. It's probably one of my favorite things ever. And also on Thursday, the 30th, we will be having a help night, same time. Oh, so workshop three, it's in the same room as workshop two, Scott 231 at 7 p.m. The help night will be in the BC Infill in the Engineering Building, uh, which is also B106. That information, all this stuff will be posted.